Hello everyone, and uh, today I want to talk about one of the stocks that I've been invested in for a while, and it's a stock that I believe has a good chance of, of beating the denominator because it is a stock uh, that could grow exponentially from here, and that stock is Enphase. Enphase is a maker of micro inverters. Um, before I dig into the stock, um, I want to talk a little bit about the sector that Enphase is in. So Enphase is into the home installation of solar panels. Uh, and it's easy to be a cynic about solar panels, say that they don't, don't look good or say that they'll never work. Um, and I guess I used to not like solar panels a few years back um, until I actually peeled back the onion and looked at the data of solar panels. Um, and when you look at energy, energy crises and where energy comes from, we realize that actually all energy comes from the sun. And so it would make sense for us to move into a better way of exploiting the sun. Um, historically, the Industrial Revolution, right, the very thing that has freed us from agriculture was oil and gas. Because of oil and gas, we were able to, to, to work so hard for so long and we uncovered so much energy for machines. But what is oil and gas? What is oil and gas that powers all of our machines? Um, well, it's nothing more than decomposed organic matter which grew millions of years ago from the sun. Uh, when you are burning oil, gas, coal, it is a derivative of energy from the sun. So would it make sense for us to simply create electricity straight from the sun by doing something that plants do, similar to, to what plants do with, with photosynthesis? Would it, would, wouldn't it make sense? Um, well, it didn't make sense for the longest times, right? From the 1960s up until perhaps 2015, the solar panels didn't make any financial sense. Um, but I want to show you in this video that they are a revolution and they are now making a lot of sense. And whether people find solar panels pretty or not, uh, I think when they see the impact that these are going to have on their wallets, they're going to adopt them uh, and they're already starting to adopt them. So solar is, is a mega trend. It is a technological revolution. It's directly converting sun energy into direct current uh, that we can use for our homes. Uh, and a lot of people underestimate solar because we have a complete inability to think exponentially, but we should. I.e. solar panels today are not the solar panels from the 90s. Uh, they are getting much better. Uh, Wright's Law tells us, and Wright's Law is kind of a successor of Moore's Law. A lot of people say Moore's Law is wrong and it's been replaced by, by Wright's Law. What does Wright's Law tell us? They tell us that when, when, when we produce something, whenever we double that production, the costs are going to decline at a constant rate. Uh, and so, of course, for silicon and semiconductors, that cost um, was something like 70% decline every year. Solar panels is not quite as high, but it is fairly high, and it is also exponential. Our solar panels are getting better exponentially. And why is that? Because they are made of silicon. They share some learning curves with our chips. That's what solar panels do. So I just want you want to show you a, a chart from a recent academic paper from Way Ives, Millie, and Farmer, uh, published in September of 2022, which shows the cost of installed solar, right? How much does it cost to produce the same amount of energy? And this is exponential. These are exponents here. We can see that... In 2005, and by the way, all of these represent different predictions. They, they went through more than 2,000 predictions. People expected cost declines to be very, very slow, very, very, very linear. And what we see is that, you know, for example, predictions of cost declines in the mid-2000s was showing almost very little improvement, which is why, of course, nobody ever invested in them. Nobody wanted to invest in that. But look at what's happened. Look at what's happened. The cost of solar panels has been divided by more than 10, right? It's, 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 it's growing exponentially. It's be becoming exponentially cheaper to do solar panels. And the predictions that we do today, the latest predictions to solar energy, they're still perhaps a little better than here, but they're still not taking into account the insane cost declines that we are seeing solar energy. Solar energy, solar panels are producing 15% more energy each year. 
or they cost 15% cheaper if you want to reverse that argument. So, so they're getting 15% better each year, and that compounds into an exponential technology, which will make it obvious that everybody will probably use solar panels 10 years from now, because that's, what, that's what's going to happen. That's going to be the, the, the technology that makes the most sense. So I don't know if you have any idea how much solar panels cost, uh, but... I've been interested in those for the past few years, as soon as costs start in declining. And I just want to do a, a quick calculation, focusing only on the costs of materials, right? Uh, so how much would it cost, theoretically, to uh, produce enough energy to cover all of the needs of, a, of the average single family home in America? The average home, the average consumption with two adults and two kids in the house in, with the average weather, with the average size, 2,500 square foot home, how much would you have to spend on solar panels today? Random prices that I find on the internet, not in bulk prices. How much would you have to spend theoretically to have free energy for however long solar panels last, about 25 years, perhaps more? Well, all you would have to spend is $3,250. That is all. That is, you only need 21 solar panels like this to power the average single family home. That is, that is all you need. Uh, this is a revolution. Whether people like the looks of solar panels or not, uh, they can have a 84% gross return on your investment by placing solar panels because the average electric bill is $228. And so theoretically, by investing three thousand two hundred and fifty dollars, you can you can make that two twenty eight a month go away. Um, and of course, I'm simplifying the calculation. And right now, I'm forgetting a lot of things. Like I'm forgetting installation of and labor. That's about three to five thousand dollars. I'm I'm forgetting the battery and the inverter. The battery is probably six to seven thousand dollars, and and the inverter may cost about. $200 to 150 per panel. So I'm forgetting all of that, but I'm also forgetting something that, that, that works in my favor. I'm forgetting the 30% federal tax credit. Um, but this is more, more demonstration I'm making for impact because in five years, what will be the cost of this solar array, right? 15% better each year for five years, this cost will be halved, right? Or you will be able to have twice as much power for the same cost. Uh, that's what's going to happen. So these costs are going to collapse and they're going to keep collapsing to the point where it makes just 100% sense to buy solar panels, where it's the only 10x, one order of magnitude, better option for energy. That will make 100% sense to most people. Just like the smartphone came out, right? When the iPhone came out, people made fun of the iPhones. Fast forward five years, 10 years, everybody has an iPhone. Look at pictures from 1903, a parade in New York City. Just horses. Seven, eight years later, no more horses. Everybody has a gas car. This is the nature of exponential technologies, right? These costs are going to go down and they're going to keep going down because we, we're riding the declining cost curves of rights law. That's what we're doing here. Um, so... When I title this video, Will It 10X in 10 Years? Uh, I'm envisioning that to be entirely possible because in 10 years, I think this will be this will be the obvious choice that people are obviously going to buy solar panels because they are so much better and they will keep getting better and better and better and better. And so the question is, how do you invest in solar panels? When there, there's many different ways to invest in solar panels, you can go the lower margin route and invest in a panel maker someone that's going to make a solar panel. Um, and I haven't done that. I don't want to do that because I think there's so much competition and it's so hard to differentiate yourself um, on, um, on solar panel manufacturing. So I don't like that as much. But there's another way to, to ride that curve. A company that is associated to each panel produced, and that is Enphase. Because Enphase has this little system on a chip, this little ASIC right here, which is an inverter. And what does the inverter do? Well, it converts DC electricity, which is, uh, which is what uh, the solar panels produce, into AC 
at the level of the solar panels. And so um, when you get a solar panel set up, you have two options. The first option is to have a large, bulky system um, at the point of electricity of your own. Um, and it's an expensive system. And, and, and you connect all of your solar panels in series and connect it to a string inverter, which, 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 is, a, which is a bulky, heavier system. Uh, that's the way it's been tradi traditionally done. It's harder to scale, it's harder to manufacture, and there's a lot of competition in that sector. Uh, but there is a fundamental problem when you when you when you um, use a, a series mounting system and when you use a string inverter. There is a serious problem in that if you have a tree, if you have a shadow somewhere on your array, anywhere, let's say you have twenty solar panels, one of your solar panels has shadows on it. It will drop the capacity of the system down to the level of that solar panel in the shadow. Let's say you have a defective solar panel. One of your solar panels only has, say, 50% of its original efficiency because, I don't know, baseball bat was launched on it, right? It's defective. Your whole system is going to become defective. This is not what happens with a decentralized system of inverters where if you have 20 panels, you have 20 inverters that are each connected to each other and form a virtual grid between your solar panels for your home. So all of a sudden, all of the issues of a traditional um, solar panel system, shadows, for example, that, that issue is gone. Uh, the issue of placement, the issue of having a right roof becomes much less important because now you can exploit each solar panel to its full potential. And what I like the most about, about this business, they don't make solar panels, right? They make inverters. They make these tiny boxes. This business can scale at the pace of the solar panel industry. Um, because I really, believe that, I really believe that is the way of the future. Uh, those micro-inverters, they're, they're much better. Uh, they're, they're less expensive. Uh, they will keep getting less expensive. They can do software updates. Uh, so, so, so there's so, much, so many advantages um, that this technology provides. Uh, and of, of course, Enphase tries to sell it as part of a whole, a whole system, a whole home system. Um, but this is their new project. This is not how the company got started. The company really got started by micro inverters, right? With putting micro inverters on solar panels. You see a solar panel here. These are the Enphase micro inverters this is the bulk of the business this is where most of the revenue comes from that's what you're investing in uh, but you kind of get the, the icing on the cake uh, with, with Enphase because they try to do much more now right so they they, they try to give you an app where you can uh, measure your load control your load uh, turn on and or turn off different appliances um, the new system of micro inverters allows you to directly convert solar energy into usable energy for your home. Um, it also allows you to either use the direct energy directly for your appliances uh, or do net metering, i.e. put that energy back into the grid so that if your home is still connected to the grid, your, your meter turns backwards, right? And so you're, so you're actually giving a credit to the electric company that you can then use at night. Um, that is an alternative to having a battery. And of course, the, the, the big deal right now, what everybody's trying to get into, of course, is, is batteries, right? Um, so they're launching their battery, IQ batteries. Uh, batteries are still the main bottleneck, although they are also on a declining cost curve. Uh, batteries will get better over time. They also have their own cost declining cost curve. Uh, but batteries are still, are still a bottleneck from that system. But with, with, with this micro inverter setup, you don't need batteries anymore. Because during the day, you can have your micro-inverters power your home. And if you don't use enough power during the day to power your home, you can do net metering, right? Where the power gets back on the grid and gets credited back to you at night. So micro-inverters, how have they performed, right? How are they performing? Well, they're still growing at 60 to 70% revenue growth each year. Uh, and I only anticipate that increasing, not decreasing, right? Um, 
one of the main ways that this company sells, and some people consider it's a risk, I'm not sure it's a risk because I think uh, most people are going to use professional installers to set up uh, their solar system. And so I, I don't think it's as much of a risk that they don't sell their investors, their inverters directly on Amazon. But some people say it's a, it's a concentration risk, but they have a very large network of installers, which they grow really, really fast. And you have to go through the network of installer to get... Um, the, to, to get this system right to to, to get these this um end phase energy system uh but like i said to me that's not as much of a problem it's it's more akin to a to a franchise uh growing through their own network of stores that's that's the way i look at it but i want to i want you to pay close attention to that to that chart to the growth chart between 2020 2012 and 2022 we've had almost 40 percent annualized return on on end phase so that's a tremendous return. If you look at their stock, their stock has a typical exponential curve look. Why? Because it is riding an exponential technology. Um, if you look here at the top here, right? What's that? That's when the Fed started raising interest rate in 2022. They, they have not been hurt much by the Fed raising interest rates. Why? Because their growth is so high. Their growth is so strong. The, the technology is so compelling, right? When households are faced with a decision where they realistically spend about $15,000 with installation and all of the miscellaneous systems, um, and then they end up saving three or $4,000 a month, sorry, a month, a, a year in electricity, uh, and then they get on top of that a federal tax credit. It, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out that you're making easily 20% on your investment in solar panels. And that investment is going to get more and more and more compelling and more and more people are going to do it. And that is the company that I'm betting on. That is the company that I think is going to benefit because that company can scale with the number of solar panels being set up. Um, again, these systems get so much better everywhere. Um, the last thing that I want to emphasize here is we are also going through another revolution, which is electric cars. When you own an electric car, you very, very rarely go to, back to the gas station anymore or go to a charger. Uh, this is a part of your life that disappears when you get an electric car. You charge your car at home. And so... As Enphase says, they estimate that the, the capacity, the installed capacity at our homes will be uh, about double what it is now. So not only are costs getting, getting cheaper, but you might have to put more solar panels than you would have in the past because electricity consumed at home is going to increase tremendously. That's another side of this story. That's a growth story. You can expect people not only are going to keep replacing the legacy electric grid and electric system with solar panels, but they're going to double its capacity. And speaking of the grid, this is something that we've seen develop with, with the Tesla virtual grid, but virtual grids are becoming a thing. Because if we each have decentralized power and produce power at home, thanks to virtual grid and the grid that is already connecting homes, you can power your neighbor home, neighbor's homes, you can power the energy from people on the other side of a city, right? You can, you can power so much with these virtual grids. And so utilities com utility companies may get replaced by virtual grids in the future uh, if we actually take a look and, and pay attention to the fact that most homes, I believe, within 10 years will generate their own electricity. Uh, that's a big thing. Not only it's a, it's, it's, it's a stable market, not only because you're replacing the, 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 the existing roofs by new roofs with solar panels, but it will be a growing market because people are going to add solar panels as they get electric cars and charge their cars at home. So that's another avenue of growth for business. I'll finish with answering this question, which which I think is is a uh, one credible argument: Is Tesla a threat? Is Tesla a threat to a company like Enphase? When you take into account the fact that most of your business comes from the microinverters. I do not think Tesla is a threat. They have a lot of patents on, on these microinverters. It's a very specific product. It took them well over a decade to develop that product. So I don't think this is a specific, a specific threat, but I do believe Tesla is a threat uh, when it comes to the power walls, when they actually produce a power wall. So Enphase is also creating its own battery. 
and there's going to be many of ty many types of batteries available to put in your home, regardless of the inverters that, that you choose, your micro inverter that you choose, you'll be able to choose whatever battery you want. So it may be a, a threat to the battery business, but I don't think it's going to be a, fr a threat to the micro inverter business. And furthermore, one of the reasons why I think Tesla is not a threat yet to the battery business in, in, in general, um, at least the one that Enphase is trying to do, is because Tesla is keeping all of its batteries for its cars. All of the batteries are going towards the cars. That's where they make the most money. So, so, so they are strategically using their batteries where they're going to make the most money and when, where they are supply constrained. And it makes little sense for them to push these power walls, even though they've been developed for probably closing in on seven or eight years now. They're not going to push them forward because those batteries are much more valuable in a car than they are in a power wall. So that's why, that's why I think Tesla in general will not be a threat because you're really investing in this micro inverter business, which makes solar panels that much more efficient and which are able to scale with solar panels. Um, and they'll be able to sell many, 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 many more hundreds of millions of these. Uh, and they've sold, they've sold dozens of millions and they will keep going. So, so I'm very hopeful in this company. I really believe in this company. Um, I think it's worth taking a look at. I did not go into a number because this is a, a qualitative analysis of this business, but I really hope you enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching and don't forget to subscribe. Thank you.